Might as well keep going. We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight, we've got a question from local game designer and tabletop bellhop patron, Roger Malosh, who writes, Hey, Mo and Sean, I'm really enjoying your show. Thank you for the occasional mention of my not ready for primetime games. I have a question for you. What's so bad about roll and move? Backgammon is a roll and move. If it's played at a fast pace for stakes, two bits a point, and the doubling cube is used, it can be very intense and exciting game. Just because this mechanism was employed very poorly in the past doesn't mean it's bad. I believe it's getting a bad rap because of the lack of player decisions and lack of ways to mitigate poor dice rolls in games like Monopoly or Snakes and Ladders. I'm currently working on a roll and move game with many tactical and strategic decisions. Are there any other roll and move games you know of which use this mechanism effectively? Well, thanks so much for the question, Roger, as always, and for supporting the show. Um, you are right. Uh, the roll and move mechanic has a bad rap in the hobby board game world and even in the non-hobby board game world. And I think you nailed some of the most important reasons, actually, in your question there. But what I do want to do is start an open discussion between Sean and I in the chat room with the care to take part um, about the, the, one of the oldest board game mechanics out there, potentially the oldest board game mechanic out there, though that seems to be debated. And I'm sure some of the things Roger mentioned, we're going to get to as well, because he, he, like he said he almost answered his own question there, except for the part about what the best are. But I want to get into game recommendations first. First, I think we need to do uh, define what a rolling move is. And I got to admit, I was almost tempted to leave this as the entire topic this week, just like we did for the definition of train games, because I'm not sure how long this will go. But I decided to combine it with a recommendation list, too. So traditionally, personally, if I think off the top of my head without doing any research, first thing I thought of was any game where I roll the dice and then move one piece, my piece, my one thing, that many spots based on the roll. Sometimes it's two dice. But there are obviously other games that do that. Like in my head, roll moves, that's what it is, right? I think of games, I think of uh, snakes and ladders. Sorry, as shoots and ladders for those of you in the US who you're, you can't allow snakes, snakes are evil. Um, snakes and ladders and sorry and trouble. Well, sorry, you actually get more than one piece. So I, so that's part of it, right? What, what about a game where you have multiple pieces and when you roll the dice, you pick which piece to move? When we get that, there's your backgammon, right? Does that count as a roll and move? Or now that I'm not moving one piece, is it not? Or does this apply to games where you choose what to do first, then roll, right? So you're going to you're gonna go, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to roll. And then how about games where you roll lots of dice? And I'm like, I got six dice, and I assign them, whether that's different ways. So what what, what is a roll? Are those all roll and moves? They, they all, like, is that our definition? So for me, personally, I feel like I'm probably on the stricter end of what is a roll and move. For me, you generate randomness, and, and I'm, and I'm going to side with Board Game Geek on this one, where roll, spin, I don't care what you do, generate a random number, okay. and then move something as a result based on that random outcome. So, right, so if you roll if you roll 2d6, and then you get to choose which piece of story you move, that's a roll and move. If you okay. only have one piece you can move, you know, you roll a d6 and it says six, you move that only piece you have, six moves around the Monopoly board, that's a roll and move. Uh, but I'm a little less good about the whole, you know, rolling like Sagradas and, and the, the, you know, rolling and, and, and placing dice and doing things. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So roll in place, I think is definitely something different. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I think the thing is the things on the board that move have to be there. They have to already be there. Yep. You're affecting the current boards. No, affecting the current board state doesn't work. No. Because no, that, that fits <laughs> both. But like you're moving stuff that's already there, right? You're, you, you start your pieces in Monopoly on Go. You start your 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 necromancer in Talisman in the um the, the graveyard, you and then you affect that that piece. So think, what so about official? What about official definition? Were you able to find many official definitions? So, well, Wikipedia has uh, board games in which a player's token or tokens are moved based on results shown on die or dice. So that would be any thing where you're going to move something based on roll or die. That that seems a little too broad. It's it's like it's, in, in in that case, I think you could probably fit in because uh, Sagrada, right? You're going to roll the dice and you are going to 
move them as based on the results on the dice. Possibly. Although the, you're not moving a separate token, but you're moving that's the true. dice, not Die a separate token. So you, yeah, yeah. That, okay. It does. It does require tokens. That that's actually. I mean, it's not too far off from my definition, but that doesn't mean it's a good definition because honestly, roll and move is really generic and encompasses yeah. a ton of games. Uh, now, next up, we have Board Game Geek, uh, which is the roll spin and move games, and this is where I, I side with them. Mm -hmm. Roll spin and move games are games where players roll dice or spin spinners and move playing pieces in accordance with the roll. So that's almost the same thing, but they're a little, just slightly different. I, I, I guess that, to me, the Wikipedia is implying you have to roll first, where the BGG seems more open. Right. That the dice could be rolled either way. So, um, so I like I'm thinking anything you roll first is going to be the the Wikipedia definition, but also fit the BGG one. Yep. So I, they both kind of work. So the usual type, right? So you're rolling the dice and you move. You've got all your your monopolies, your clue, Cluedo, snakes and ladders, etc. They've been used for years, like like sorry, trouble. And then even going further back to older games, I'm drawing a blank on some of them right now off the top of my head, is, um, <laughs> sorry. And I, I, I think those are definitely role moves. Like, I, I, don't, I think that definitely fits the, the definition, the, the, the common definition, the commonly accepted definition. But what about ones where you w decide what you're going to do? So you plan ahead. You're like, I am going to do this. And then I'm going to roll the dice to see if it works. Does that count as a roll and move? So the, the biggest example of this is, is modern is Rallyman GT. But there are other games that have this aspect. So I'm very firmly against Rallyman GT being a roll and move. I, I think it, it, it uses rolling and it uses moving. But under the definitions that I'm happy with of roll and move, it's really not because... You're playing, I, and, and to be honest, I think this probably actually goes along with Can't Stop, which other people have talked about. Mm -hmm. um, it's very much That's the same one. thing. You're rolling, and you are allowed to do something because of the roll. The roll is not telling you what to do. Like, when I roll a dice in Rallyman GT, that, it's, it's a yes, no. I've just, it's, it's not influencing my move other than saying yes or no. Whereas if I rolled the you know if i rolled a number of gear dice and those dice said you get gears one two three four i could then move mm -hmm. one two three four that would be different whereas in this case it's just a yes no binary decision but even that if we look at the bgg definition you are going to roll dice and move playing pieces according to that roll you're well, gonna see because you're rolling and you're either moving forward or you're not and to me, you're moving according to that role. Yes, it's yes, no, but it's still yes, no. It's am I moving forward or not? And the dice tell me if that's well, true again, or not. But again, though, it, with with if we go back to Rally, Rallyman GT, you can rearrange your dice if you failed. If you do an all in one roll, for instance. So if I roll all my dice at once and I get three fails, but then you're moving according to those dice you are assigning. But now. I'm rearranging how I assign them, so it's not the roll as much as my decision that's influencing the move. All right, so jumping over to con Can't Stop, I think Can't Stop is a roll move. You literally roll the dice and you move the pieces, the numbers on the dice. Well, you 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 choose a piece. One, you only get to move once. So if you roll a six, you move the piece that's on six. One, you don't move anything. Six pieces, as six spaces. But you're still moving a piece based on the accordance of the roll. The roll determines what piece you can move instead of how far it goes, right. but it still determines what piece you can move. I saw, that's where, that's where yeah, it gets... Yeah. It, it gets right? it gets blurry. Like I don't think that fits the Wikipedia the, the, the definition because to me the Wikipedia is saying you're moving it as far as the number on the die. So well, I don't know why it, results. Because it, it doesn't. It, well, it says, it says based results on result. shown on the die. That's right. the, versus well, and, and, according to the roll. Right. I guess they're kind of the same thing. I mean, based, if you're if you are moving a piece based on the results shown on a die, if I roll a six on can't stop, I move the piece on six on one, six. and that yeah, does that fit fits. the definition. I think that does fit. Rally man, I'm still I'm kind of yeah, on the I'm fence. Not, I'm, 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 it's close. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not, no one has convinced <laughs> me yet that, uh, and maybe, the, maybe the chat room will be back one of us up and we can see if we can get some more arguments towards that. So, uh, Red Meeple Ryan saying if backgammon is a roll and move, then can't stop is, but again, it is different. 
because you are moving the pieces in backgammon a number of diagonal. Well, I don't know what they're called. This shows I played backgammon for a long time. That's the number. It's not telling you what column you get to move things once. So that's the difference in can't stop. And what's interesting is can't stop. Like we did the show notes ahead of time. We've done some research. Didn't even come up. And then I saw it just before going live, and I was like, "That." Let's take a look. So and and actually, um, Razul five hundred two in the chat room puts up an interesting point. Uh, the definition is often. Uh, up to the number rolled. So in many games, if you roll a six, mm. you can move less than six, especially at the end of the game. Uh, you now, don't is that move. a roll and move, though, or is a roll and move, especially the ones people hate, you have to move the number on the dice. Right. Once you add that up to, you now have all those decision points. Does that fall? I didn't even think of that type of game. I mean, to so, me... So let's look, at, let's look at a couple specific games. So Zaya. Yep. It's got both, because... You can have the decision. Like, normally, no, in Zaya, you have your one engine, you're going to roll your one die and see how far you can move. But once you put a second ship engine on that ship, you are making the decision before you roll, and you have to make that decision. You have to be like, I am going to activate this engine or this engine. Mm -hmm. And if I activate this engine, it's going to give me this die. And if I activate this engine, it's going to give me that. So you have that decision before you roll, which is which is a form of uh, the two different types of it. Input, input and output randomness it actually changes it from output randomness of the or from input randomness of the dice tell me what i can do to i'm choosing what to do and the dice tell me if i could do it right so but i like i can't think of as i as not a roll and move but it still has that i'm planning ahead then rolling a die to see if it works right which again is kind of rally man it's just the difference is i'm rolling to d6 so i have six results whereas in rally man i have one of two results go or no go yeah, no, it's it's interesting. I, uh, and honestly, I haven't played Zaya enough to to be as basically. It's put a cube on your engine, roll the die for your engine. That's far how far you can move. Right. But then this gets to a whole other point. You can move anywhere. Right, you're on a hex map. Versus, does roll and move imply you have to be on a track? Because so, Monopoly I, I, really is a track. Yeah. It just happens to go I, in a I circle. I would say I would say the roll and move definition should not uh, define how you are moving. Okay. Only that you are moving. Um, so and and really realistically for Zaya, to me, it's it's a roll and move. There is just a decision before yes. the roll and move. So that that separates the the, okay. the decision. Whereas with Rallyman GT, it's that you're you're mixing that decision yeah, in you mix with the, the roll and move. And that's where the confusion and my concern about whether it is or isn't a roll and move comes in. So Zaya is still you roll and move. You yeah. have just you have just had to make a decision in you advance. Make it's much like in trouble. You know, I want to move my blue piece six spaces instead of this. You know, my second blue piece six yes. spaces or something. There there can be decisions, but okay. you are rolling according yep. to the outcome of the random, yeah, you know, randomization. Right. I, actually, Ryan worded it well. I don't think a roll and move stops being a roll and move once you have agency. Right. It's yep. Still no, a roll. Yep. Absolutely. The agency right. is is is. is we're going to get into us. Yeah, we're going to get into a little <laughs> bit more in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So so getting to other games. So what about dice placement games? The problem is I don't think you've played any of these to really get the idea. So yeah. Alien Frontiers, I take 5d6, I roll them. On the board are spots where it's like place a straight, place two of a kind, place um, a pair, and you place your dice, and where you place them, you get actions. Right, and that's not a, now, that's not a roll and move to me. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm thinking it's not. The only thing is there is one spot where if you place it, you then get to place or move a colony on the board. But do you move it according to the number on the dice? Or is it no, just it's for using that spot? Yeah, so, so no, that's fair. That, that's, I agree. that's more of a, you know, you, if you put if you put a blue th token there, you get to move yep. something somewhere, the same thing. Okay, next is Kingsburg, probably the same thing as Alien Frontiers. You roll 3d6 and you have a board with the numbers one through 18. You then can place your dice. If you roll an 18, you can place it all three dice on 18, or you could place it on six. I guess they'd all be sixes, six, six, and six three times, or you could place it on six, 12, and six, or whatever, right? Like you can place them, whatever, and then you get resources and stuff for it. So, like Valeria, like uh, uh, it's not, similar. it's much different. It's, it's more like yeah. think of a bingo board and you're placing your dice on a bingo board to get stuff. But again, you're not moving, yeah, you're not getting it. as you're not moving anything as a yep. result of those rules. I agree. So, here's the complicated one Coimbra. You get dice in different colors, you roll them, you then, that's the cost you have to pay to buy something, right? That I get, that that fills with Alien Frontiers and Kingsburg, but at the same time, every time you use a die, you go up a track in that color, 
which then adjusts your income. But you are moving a piece up a track based on the value on the die. Right. So if the, what's brilliant about that game is like a purple die will let me buy a purple person. If I play a one, I get to buy them for only one gold. But then my purple luxury track only goes up one. Whereas if I pay a six, I got to pay six for the guy. But then my luxury track goes up six. That sounds like a roll and move to me, or at least a roll and move mechanic within the larger yeah. game. See that that one? I think people are going to argue. No one's going to consider Coinbra a roll and move. I don't even think it was on the board game geek list, which but was see, very that's the, that's the open. Thing. And this is where we get into the same problem we had with racing games or whatever game you want to think. It there is a mechanic of roll and move inside of Coinbra. Is Coinbra right. a roll and move? No, but it at one point in the game uses the mechanic of roll and move which doesn't right. break the game because again, no we're gonna get into the we're gonna get into the whole good and bad but so so yeah i think this is something again we're gonna hit on later is how much does it impact the game i think it's going to be an important aspect i i coimbra and, and then there's others right like coimbra is the biggest one i can think of the most blatant example but there are all kinds of games where you roll dice and go up tracks based on the number you rolled yeah but they're not usually move a piece though it's move a counter. It's keep track of resources. Like, like even a game where you roll 2d6 or even Valeria. If you took Valeria and instead of collecting counters, you made that a track for power and you moved your thing up the track when you got it, does that turn Valeria into a roll and move? And I'm kind of thinking not because it could be done another way. So maybe right. that's another whole aspect of it where Coimbra wouldn't count. Because yes, that's how the game tracks it, but you could hand out cards. Well, you again, could you could collect. Again, you get into the problem. Just because you use a mechanic doesn't mean it is a roll and move game. Just because there's a train in the game doesn't make it a train <laughs> game. Again, you can use a roll and move mechanic without making a roll and move game. We don't have to call Coimbra a roll and move game. Yeah. It just happens to have that one mechanic in one tiny little aspect of the game. But again, is it even that mechanic? Because it's just one way to represent things means you move something, but well, they yeah, could but collect they chose, stuff instead. They chose to make it a roll and move. They could have chosen yeah. to make something else, but they choose to they chose to do it by right. rolling and moving. <laughs> so Razuel is saying the same thing, space space. You track your resources on a board, they're moving along a track up and down, back and forth. Yep. I think that's pushing it. Like, yeah, I guess that's a roll and move. You're moving something based again, on the two definitions we have, it fits. Again, the two official. Again, it's a mechanic, not a game type, See, right? I don't know. I, I actually think it doesn't count. If you could represent it another way, there is no other way to represent what space you are in Monopoly in relation to everyone else or what spot you are on in shoots and ladders. I can't collect tokens to show my progress in snakes and ladders. Sure, you could. You don't need a board. You do it all with cards. You can make a Monopoly board, a game where you're just dealing out cards. Okay, you, you rolled a six here, you, you know, the sixth card off the top of the deck or something. There's ways to uh, do it. Yeah, but you need to know where the other players are. I'm like, hey, can I count your cards? Uh, well, it's, it's, I guess. You, know, it's just, you use a deck of cards instead of. A, a, a track so it's still the same you're, you're still in the same order in the same place it's just yeah. a deck of cards instead of a board i don't think representation really makes that much of a difference i guess i'm having a hard time thinking of, of some of those games as rolling moves all right I mean, we're gonna we're gonna step away for a second and look at some other stuff and see if this changes our thoughts at all so let's start with why do people hate them why but why do so many gamers absolutely supposedly despise roll and move though i bet you a bunch of those love coimbra um <laughs> hate this mechanic and think it's terrible Be and obviously we kind of hinted at this earlier roger mentioned it right in his question it's all about player agency and having meaningful choices if there's no actual option presented and then the game's purely random it, it's it's doesn't matter it's meaningless it leads to uh I, like just the person who rolls better wins the game right like there's there's no no strategy there's no tactics there's no 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 way to plan ahead the now, thing the thing that, that that ruins um board games for most hobby gamers is pure luck or or the closer to pure luck you get the farther from a true hobby game you get right you want well, to be able to that's make, equating hobby games with euro games though you want to be able to make decisions that have mm -hmm. an impact and if it's pure luck there is no decision there, there's no decision involved whether you're whether you know whether it's uh how you shuffled the deck in uh, uh um the game you hate uh flying by 
Candyland or the rules you make on, you know, uh, on, on um, snakes and ladders. It's, it's all about how, how much decision and, uh, you have and yeah. how much it matters versus the pure luck. I just worry that you get pushed too much. Like uh, some luck can be good, but the, again, we get into the input output randomness thing. Well, there's, yeah, the that's, luck that's is other... okay if you make the decision and then there's the luck. If the luck determines what you can do, that's when it's a problem. Right. So Zaya, you can have lots of luck. You're going to roll the dice. You may not be able to get where you want, but you could probably go somewhere else or do something else. Or you have backups or you have ways to mitigate the randomness and all that. Where it's really bad is when you have no choice. Like it, it's it's not a check. It's not, oh, I want to do this. Let's see if it works. It's, all right, what do I got? All right, my option is that. I have to do it. I, I have no agency. I do the thing. That's when it's terrible. And that's why people hate rolling modes. And similarly, it can actually ruin otherwise good games. Like to me, the perfect example of this is Talisman. Technically the original first and second editions of Talisman and third edition of Talisman. Like I don't mind rolling to move on the outer ring, right? You get choices. Do I go left? Do I go right? Sometimes it kind of sucks. You don't get a good choice, but that to me, it's part of the fantasy adventure. It's the random wandering. That's all fine. I have no problem with that. But it's, there are multiple spots on that game board where you need a specific role to progress, starting with the Sentinel on the, the outer panel, going to the um, the portal of power on the, in the second tier, where you have to land on it. And I have had so many games of Talisman where I could be in the lead and have plus 12 strength, plus 12 craft, ready to take on the game, and just I can't roll that number. I, I spend turns going past it, 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 until someone else comes up, excuse me, happens to get lucky, rolls and gets on the portal power and wins the game because of that. That drives me nuts. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you look at games like Clue, Cluedo, uh, where, you know, you can be the most brilliant person in the world and have the 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 perfect concept of logic puzzles. But if you don't get the information you need, you can't win. <laughs> You know, see that I've never understood why Clue even has roll and move. Yeah, like like just let people teleport to whatever room they want to to ask the right question. Like I, I've never understood why that was put in there, except for tradition, right? Like because to a lot of people, here's another aspect: is a lot of people who don't know better think every board game is either a card game or a game where you roll dice, right? In some way, and there are a lot of people that grew up thinking that. Absolutely, I mean, a, a board game is. And, and, you know, a board again, with I grew pieces, up, you roll it's dice. a board, you roll dice to move somewhere. And there's a lot yes. of different things you can do within that, as mm -hmm. we're showing today even. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, you are rolling or spinning in the case of the game of life. And, you know, again, generating a random mm -hmm. value and using that value to move around a board that is the game. So a great example of this that kind of blew my mind because like I've been a hobby gamer so long, I don't I don't think about the fact that not everyone thinks the way of, of games the same way. We are at the Windsor Comic Con. I'm there with uh, Jeff Sue's friend and patron of the show. And we are with the CG Realm and we're promoting our Extra Life event coming up. As part of that, we're giving away a copy of Harry Potter Funkoverse. Now this is before it was available to the public. So this was a big deal. And we had demo games set up. And the first couple that came to play in cosplay, we actually taught Gambit and um, Phoenix how to how to play Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. The first thing they did was grab the dice and roll them, and then went, "Now what do I do?" And I'm like, "Why are you rolling the dice? Like, well, what, how do you start your turn?" I'm like, "Well, you have four action points. You can do these things. <laughs> well, what are the dice for? Well, if you attack someone, you're going to roll them and see what happens. So I don't roll to see how far I can move. I'm like, no, no, you got four points. Do whatever you want. You can move. You can attack. You can, and it, like you could just see the they were younger. I'm going to say kids, but they're not necessarily kids. I'm like, I remember their their heads just like, oh wow, like like games can do this. And I got to say, I don't think of Funkoverse. I think of that more as a mainstream game than anything else. But yeah, it doesn't have a roll and move aspect. It blew people's minds. Yeah. No, it's 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 a. Uh... <clears throat> It's a strange concept for someone who has lived with the concept the of Hasbro Family Game Night, because yeah. Hasbro Family Game Night is roll and move. I mean, that's, you know, you're either rolling and move or answering trivia questions. <laughs> and to be honest, it's actually probably, I hadn't thought of this before, but a reason why Catan was so readily accepted by people, because you start every turn by rolling 2d6. Right. You didn't move pieces, but you got resource, but you still, you started your turn, the other player passed you the dice, and you threw them on the ground. Yep. on the ground on the table 
if you're, if you're playing it on the ground, you're, you're you're really doing that real world Catan thing. I'm... But but I think we agree that the the bad thing about roll and move is a lack of agency. Like that Absolutely. that is the ultimate problem. That is the problem with roll and move. Yeah. So, what makes a good roll and move? Obviously, meaningful choices. Like that that it's the opposite of the the problem with them is give me an actual meaningful choice. Right. If you're gonna roll the dice, if you're if you're gonna roll the dice and say, okay, you're gonna roll that dice, and you have to move however many spots it comes up. Well, that's fine if I can move in any direction I yes. want, if I that's can maybe use some of that, uh, some of those points, movement points to say, open a door or not open yep. a door or, you know, make me, allow mm. me to do something with the ability uh, uh, that I've rolled. So that, that makes me jumping back to our talks on different types of games. So would you consider a game where you roll to randomly generate a number of action points that can then be used to take different actions a roller move? Yeah. Like like if XCOM, <laughs> you got a random number of points. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know I'm thinking of a video yeah. game. But yeah. The yeah. FASA Star Trek, the role play game, is the first game I can think of with action points. Pandemic, if you rolled a D6 and instead of getting four actions, you got one through six actions every turn. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's roll and move. Sounds good. So the other one that I think needs to be added in here too is the move multiple pieces. So you make your roll and it's not just move one thing. It's you can pick. So yeah, the story is probably the best example of this. I think Trouble has the same thing. Aren't the two games are pretty similar. Uh, Parcheesi, I mean, Parcheesi, uh, yeah. Via, Topo, which we Supu, have behind us. Uh, or Supu, Supo or whatever that game, the, the, the Chinese game from... Yeah, we, we didn't actually get into that. <laughs> 220 is literally Parcheesi and Sori, and, but yeah. in, you know, ancient ancient times. So, Sori is cards? Sori doesn't use cards, does it? Not it's maybe. been so long since I played oh, I'm Sori. Thinking, you're thinking Trouble. We're thinking Trouble, I think. is. I'm thinking Trouble, not Sori? I think okay, so. Sorry. Well, I, although I think it's still, you can draw random cards, see how far you move. But yeah, having, having that choice of, I can move one of multiple pieces. I, even the up to right? I can move up to six is a huge one. Yeah, Trouble has the pop -o -matic. I knew that, but I'm trying to think of the one where if you land on the opponent's piece, you slide, they go back to the beginning. I think that's in both, right? Yeah, yeah. Is, Pro is yeah, both Trouble and Sorry have that? Where yeah, if you that land mechanic on is, yeah, that mechanic is both. Yeah. Uh, so, meaningful choices. Another one that I think makes a roll and move better is some way to mitigate the randomness. So, this is something that we talk a lot about, Zaya Legend of the Drift System, and how it's so much better with the expansion. Well, the expansion added modules you can add to your engines that give you minimum die roll results. So you no longer have that. I build the biggest engine in the game and I'm going to roll a D20 to move and roll a one. They totally remove that possibility, but you do have to buy a thing to do it, but it makes sense, right? You're, you're a new pilot. You got your new ship. You're not that good at flying yet. Then, you know, you put a new thing on, you get your autopilot. Now you can fly a little better, but anything like that. There's um, Pulsar. There's a game that involves rolling dice. There is Pulsar a roll and move. Because one of the actions you can take in Pulsar is move your ship with your dice. Yeah. So, yeah, there, that's Again. one of Sean's favorite games. Yeah. So, yeah, so Pulsar, right? You have, you can buy those reroll things. And you can buy the, the what is it, P minus one, plus one, or yeah. plus two, I think, are the two tokens you can get. And then there's things you can get on your base that give you bonuses and so on. So any, any way to mitigate the randomness is going to make a basic roll and move better. And, and then to be honest... And that includes what we were talking about earlier of saying you don't have to move all your points, right? Yes. If if in Talisman, you didn't have to move six every time mm -hmm. you rolled a six, yep. you would have mitigated the randomness and it wouldn't be as bad because you wouldn't be bouncing back and forth yes. or trying to get on that one spot you need and losing the game because of it. Yeah. And and to be honest, a uh, slight spoiler, uh, I do put Talisman on the list tonight because the fourth edition changed that. It's, right. it's, if you haven't played Talisman since the 80s and 90s, it may be worth trying again because of that. Um, the other thing here, though, is I think another thing that makes roll and moves, good's probably not the right word, but tolerable, is that the roll and moves just a small part of the game, right? There's lots of other interesting, cool things going on. And here's where the, that aspect of Coimbra, while well, important to your final score and everything else, it's just a small part of the very point salad, right? It's, it's, it's one ingredient in the point salad, and it's really more of a track, and it's not as much a roll and move. So the game isn't ever about who rolls the highest. And again, that is back to that meaningful choices. But if you remove the, the, the runaway leader problem of the person who rolls sixes always wins, that makes the roll and move more tolerable. Yeah, absolutely. Any, anytime you're, uh, 
you know, any anytime you're you're giving the person more options, giving yes. you know, again, it's again it less random. <laughs> the anytime you anytime you can make the dice hurt you less, um, you know, point 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 to where all the places where the dice hurt you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the other one is if you replace the randomness with push your luck elements. So I know we kind of said Rally Man's not a, a, a um, roll and move, but one of the things that Rally Man does is I'm going to go with the definition that you are rolling yes or no, you get to move, so it counts for this. And what it does is it remo- replaces complete randomness with push your luck. So you're going to roll that first die, and if you make it, you may as well keep rolling. You may as well keep rolling. And you're getting your move one spot every time for doing it, but then eventually you roll a, I, I don't know what they're called, hazard symbol. Yep. And it's raining out. So now you know if you roll one more hazard symbol, your car is not only going to stop moving, it's going to wipe out. So now I have the option to stop or I can push my luck and roll. By throwing that in there, you change the entire emotional feel of the die roll, which I think makes that form of roll and move what's so engaging. Why Rally Man so much fun is that push your luck element, in my opinion. That's fair, except you make those decisions before you start rolling. So... No, you don't have to roll flat out. You don't have to roll all your dice at once. You can roll them one at a time. Well, yeah, but you still have to. If you've lit, if you've put out six dice, you need to either roll them all, unless you have the the point the the safe safety points to spend. No, not even that. You can just roll one die and stop. Really? You don't have to roll all six dice. That's why I think it's a roller move. Sean plays rally man very different than I do. Apparently, obviously. apparently I do. <laughs> um, I don't know. I you just... can just roll. You can roll two dice and get two warnings and just stop and be like, oh, I only moved two. And you're at whatever gear the last eye you used was. Okay, I don't think I've ever played it that way because I there always you go. I, I don't I don't put down more dice than I know I could get away with. Oh, see, I put um, down all six dice every round, every single time I put down every die, and then I roll them one at a time, and then stop oh. when I'm like I I I am going to push my luck or not. Interesting. Maybe that's why Sean thinks it's not a roll and move. I, maybe that's also why I'm beating you almost every game. I don't know. Yeah, that could be it too. <laughs> Eric, oh Eric, I, I, we'll talk about that in the, in yeah. the on the table. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> rally man's really good accessibility you uh, i you'd need someone to help yeah it's possible the the hardest part is going to be tracking where everyone is on the board i'm not sure how you would represent that I, physically you should be able to feel it yeah and and the dice literally have one warning symbol on each side and the rest are the, the real problem is up. um understanding your hazards in advance like you, you need to be able to pl- plan out yeah. your uh, path because of all the various hazards and gears you need to be in you'd have to do some funky stuff with the boards and the corners and what you need in each spot but i think it's possible yeah all right all well, right i think now that we've talked about what makes a game a roll and move <laughs> let's move on to some roll and move game suggestions all right just first let, let's summarize okay so you roll a die you move something that was on the board somewhere else is that pretty much it yeah, it still it still introduces some problems. For instance, how do you get the first piece on to Can't Stop? Oh, okay. So there's something said, or just Can't Stop, not a rolling right? Or just Can't Stop, that. not a rolling. I'm, 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 that, I'm that, that, the... that makes me kind of lean the other way. Yeah. I think the most commonly accepted is you already have stuff out, you roll dice, and then move them based on what's rolled on the dice. Yeah. So I think we might have just knocked Can't we Stop may have out. Knocked, not Can't Stop out. Okay, there we go. We might have with that. It doesn't. It doesn't eliminate. It doesn't eliminate Rally Man. But uh, again, I'm apparently I'm playing it wrong. So yeah, <laughs> Rally Man. Well, again, Rally Man. It's because you roll after. It's it's the fact it swaps from again output randomness to input randomness, and or the other way around. I'm getting those all confused tonight. All right. So basically, I, I think everyone's got an idea. But yeah, it's a mess, right? Like, yep. it, and there's a reason it's a mess. But we do completely agree on the reason rolling move can suck completely is it can strip away all player agency and the games that do it right somehow add that back in or do something else to make the game fun because our first game is kind of an exception to what i just said yep so moving on to them i am going to start with zaya legends of the drift system and you know what this really is it's terrible like like the 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 roll and move system in this is terrible the expansion does mitigate it, so that makes it better. It's one of the reasons the expansion's good. But in Zaya, that game is just so random in general. Like, you're moving through things, and you're drawing random cards, and random things are going to happen, and 
ships are going to move random amounts and you're going to jump onto a new thing and you don't know what's there and you might jump into the sun. And when something attacks you, you got to roll and there's like a 50% chance you're going to, uh, ship's going to ice over. Like that is the fun of that game. It is a so random, you have to embrace it. And that's when Zaya is fun. And in this case, yes, I build the biggest engine, but I might roll a one. But I also, if I build the biggest engine and I roll a 20, I go so fast that I gain a fame point for flying the fastest ship in the galaxy. And to me, that's what Zaya is. Zaya is this sandboxy, you don't know what's going to happen, random die rolls. Like if it was an RPG, it'd be running everything from the back of the red box, rolling random dungeons. That's Zaya, but in board game format. And you know what? I love it because you have to embrace it. There are so many die rolls. It's not only roll and move, you're also rolling to to go through everything do you also are rolling to get through shields and you're you're rolling to see how much your weapons do and like it's just it's a dice fest and i gotta say I, it's one of the best rolling moves out there but you have to embrace it you know what you're getting into if you play a game of zaya you know that the person who rolls the most 20s in the game might win the game just because they're lucky and that's part of the game yeah no absolutely and one of the things is i with zaya there's almost uh too much randomness or not too much but oh. they, they, so much randomness that it becomes fun again mm -hmm. is the sort of thing and there's so many because you're you're there's a random amount of different random things you can get into you're, yes you're getting into you know exponential randomness in there uh and that was zaya legends of adrift systems next i have camel up which a lot of people still like to call camel cup even though they finally fixed the logo so it doesn't look like that why this one works is it's a race and rolling dice to see how much things move in a race just makes sense to me that's logical it's a logical use for the mechanism now what makes camel up work is you don't own any of the camels you're not rolling to move your camel you are randomly getting a die to tell you which camel to move and rolling it to see how far it moves and you have no control over that it completely strips away player agency because that's not the part that you are doing as a player what you're doing as a player is betting on those camels. And then there's the funky mechanic of camels stacking that makes it fun and interesting. The results of a race like this that you're betting on should be random. That's kind of the point of playing a gambling based game is yes, you can play the odds. And what I like about camel up is the closer the camels get to the end, the more you can play the odds. Like, you know, there's only three dice left and there's a chance the green camel will move. But if the green camel moves, the orange one's going to end up on top. So the orange will win. Like, that's all part of the game. And none of those decisions have anything to do with the dice that come out until after the fact, right? After the camels are moved, now you're going to make a whole bunch more decisions. Then dice are going to happen. Stuff's going to change. And then you're going to make decisions again. And that's why I think Roll and Morph works great in Camel Up. Absolutely. And, and part of it is that you're not controlling your own personal yes. fate with that dice roll, right? It's the big difference between Clue, where if you roll a dice, your little token is the only thing that's going to mm -hmm. happen and you're going to hate yourself or not, or whereas if you roll a dice in Camel Up, everyone is being affected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it adjusts the board state for everyone, not just you. So there's a good aspect. And so that was Camel Up. Next, Formula D, which I think we can officially call it that because it's been out in North America long enough. I don't have to call it Formula Day anymore. Um, what I think works in this one, this one is a racing game. Yes, you own your own car, uh, with the really fun, actually, is when you own two cars because you get points for both. It's actually a better game, I find, with five or less players so you can each run two cars. But ignoring that, what works here is that the dice are not as random as they look. So if you haven't played Formula D, you're going to look at the game and think, well, if I go slow, I roll the D4. And if I go faster, I roll the D6. If I go really fast, I roll the D20. And there's even a D30. But the thing in that game is that most people don't realize until you play it is the dice don't show all the numbers. So the D4 is actually you move one or two only. But the D30 is you move, I think the range is 15 to 8 or no, it's 15 to 18 or something like that with a weight towards 8 or 15 to 30 with the weighted towards the 18. And that changes the, the bell curve, the mathematics of the dice. And that's why I think it works compared to just rolling it. If that game was roll a D20 and you might roll a one, it would be terrible. It would just reward the player who rolls the best. Meanwhile, it's a game very similar to Rallyman GT, which is all about mitigating your speed into the corners and making sure you don't bump other players. 
that is where there's a ton of randomness with formula d is every time you go next to another player you roll a d20 and if you roll the right number i forget it's like a 19 or 20 you um you you crash and if anyone's seen will wheaton play this on tabletop they go nuts over this damage die and like there's special effects every time someone rolls it that is highly random i actually kind of don't like that rule in formula d but the actual dice you use for your gears work because they're not a full linear scale right they've taken the math of rolling a dice and fixed it deliberately in order to give you a more enjoyable game so they have reduced the randomness by changing the values on the yes. actual faces of the die. And that was Formula D. Next, I have Merchant of Venus. This is a really old, like way older than you expect. I think 70s sci-fi board game originally published by Avalon Hill. Uh, Fantasy Flight's the last people to have the license, and they put out a newer version, which I do have there behind me. This is a game, pick up and deliver in space, more constrained than Zaya. So it's similar in the fact that you are going to go to different planets, you're going to pick up goods and deliver them to other planets that want the goods. And you roll randomly, see how far you move. And that is a big aspect of the game that some people don't like. But what they have done in this is there's arrows on the board and they're in different colors for different routes and different engines get bonuses on different ones. And what will happen is you'll have three or four different ways to go. So a bad roll will still hurt and it doesn't remove all the choices. It does give you options. And again, that's that big thing for the, the roll and moves and why it works here is the options that are presented. So while I might not be able to make it all, the, excuse me, all the way to Mars this turn, maybe I can stop off at the satellite instead and pick up some extra goods before I get to Mars, right? So it has that aspect to it, which again, I didn't, I, I didn't even think of it as a roll and move when we did it. But that's also the reason I think it works in, in um, Pulsar is there's lots of different ways to go on Pulsar. If I've got a six move, I could go here, I could go through here, I could go through there. Again, giving that player more options to use the randomness that they are stuck with through a die roll. And that was uh, the original version from 1988 with the update okay. in 2012, Merchant of Venus. It's actually newer than I thought. I thought it was one my dad had, so I thought it was older than that. Still old as far as most people are concerned. Uh, next up is Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters, a game we mentioned on the show. It's not like we try to shoehorn it into all these, but it does seem to come up a lot. I got to admit, this is one I don't like, the roll and move aspect. Rolling a one in that game sucks. But there's so much other good stuff going on in that game and cooperating and working together and the, the, the tension of trying to get rid of a ghost before a room becomes haunted. And then the expansion, adding more stuff in. I got to admit, I'll, I'll overlook it. Like, I'm like, no, sorry, I eh, that's fine. I Yeah, I hate it. I hate rolling a one. At least it's mitigated. When you roll a one, you don't put any ghosts out, so you get something. So actually, a two actually kind of feels worse because <laughs> on a two, you're getting ghosts and you barely move. And then there's the additional rule you can't move through someone, and the worst is when you're on that last spot trying to get out of the house and someone's on the spot and you can't roll it so you can't get past them. And I've had it at the end of the game where you have all three kids standing in a row and the one in the back goes first, so on a one, two, and three, they can't move. I, I do wish, and this is something that would have been nice in the expansion, is there was some way to mitigate it, like some way to earn rerolls. Like when you defeat ghosts, collect them, and then you can trade in a ghost to get plus one. Like that that would have fixed, there you go, I think I just came up with a, probably a pretty good house roll for ghost fighting treasure hunters. So yeah, I got to admit it, I, I hate the roll and move aspect, but this is one of those things where the, the sum of the parts is better. That, that one little part's a little, eh, but we just ignore that. And that is Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. Now, we hinted at this one earlier, and that is Talisman. I know I listed this as one of the games I hate due to roll and move, but that is actually only the first three editions of Talisman. Modern versions, uh, based on the fourth edition, have removed the requirement to roll exactly to land on certain spots. So now the Portal of Power, if you go by it, you can stop if you want to interact with it. Now, if you just want to draw a card and not try to get through the portal, you still have to roll exactly. Same thing with the Sentinel. You are free to just challenge the Sentinel. You have to be able to move through him. So you don't have to land on the spot. You have to be able to move through him. And as long as you can move through him, you can have a six, you can have a three, you can move through him. That really makes the game so much better. And they've also done other improvements in the fourth edition. I realize this isn't roll and move related, but they removed, reduced the amount of XP to level up. Uh, they give everyone a stat increase at the beginning of the game, and they have done a ton of things. 
to reduce the play time from like six to eight hours down to a two hour game now. And it, and all of these, of course, are making the game less random. And that was Talisman, specifically fourth edition and beyond. Yes. Which does include all the ones based on it. So um, Talisman Batman is the version I own. There's Talisman Kingdom Hearts and there's Talisman Star Wars even out there now. So all of those newer editions definitely do a lot to help with it. Next, I have an interesting one I have not talked about in a very long time. It's a game I really enjoyed uh, back in the 2000s. This is an abstract economic game called Basari. Now, what this does is you are rolling a D6 and you are moving your pawn one to six times. But where you move makes things more interesting. It's not like, like I landed on Park Place so I get to buy it or I landed here so I get something. So what it does is it determines the value of the gems that turn. So if, if anyone looks at a picture of the board, you'll see it. So if I land on this spot, it gets, shows three red gems. Well, three red gems go up for auction and the number on the die roll sets the price. Well, this is a huge trading game. This is a very open trading game. Like I'll give you two red gems for a green gem. Well, this sets the base price. And why it works is it affects everyone. It's like Sean mentioned earlier with, um, what game was it we talked about that? Uh, Camel Up. The, the, the die roll changes the game state for every player. So it doesn't really matter. Now, what rolling high does in this is, yeah, it starts the opening bid, but it also moves you further around the track, which could cause the game to end sooner because the game ends as soon as someone's made a complete lap. But again, that affects everyone. It's it's not something that, like, you, you're not making a decision. You're like, I want the game to end sooner. It just, it's to make it so you don't know when the game's going to end, which actually makes the game more interesting because if you had a set number, you could plan ahead a little bit more, which is not what you actually want in this fast trading game. This is supposed to be a, a rapid fire, I'll trade you this for this and this for this and this for this type of game. Uh, interestingly, there's a, there's a couple of different rebuilds on this, but I'm not sure how, if they've come to North America, because there's Basari, um, Edelstein and Reich, um, and then there's, or sorry, that's Edelstein and Reich, and Bastari das uh, Basari das Kartenspiel. Um, that's no, that's uh, that's Basari the card game, which is a different game. Except it uses both the original Basari and the and and Eidelstein oh, and Reich and sort of expansion mashes them together. To okay. Uh, whereas Eidelstein and Reich is listed as one of the small boxes from Aaliyah. See, this is a small box game. Okay. Now the one I have is published by Yastari. This goes back. Like this is one of the games I got. Like when I got into Catan right. and Carcassonne. Like this is we're, well, we're in, talking in two thousand and three. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Idelstein and Wright came out, and that's the Aaliyah small box. Yeah. Set. So as I said, it was early two thousands when I played this. So really neat game. But again, you're rolling the die and moving, but it it changes the board state. And that was Basari. Now. Next is Monza, which is a game we haven't recommended in a long time because my girls haven't been that young in a long time. This is a kid's game. It's one of the yellow Haba kids games. And I've got to say now I would call it Rally Man for Kids because it uses a similar mechanic. Now, my kids are well past this, but if you have kids, this is a great game for teaching dice rolling in color. This is kills Candyland, right? If your argument is I use Candyland to teach my kids counting and colors, no, throw that out. Buy Monza. You make real decisions. Where this works is how people want Rallyman to work. I get a set of five dice, I roll them, and I have a track with all kinds of colors. And while I move forward by putting a die of the right color on the track, and then I put another die and another die. And the thing is, there is some thought process here because you have to plan ahead. Like, do I, if I use my white now, that means I can't use it later and stuff like that. Now, again, super simple kids game. It's only three tracks. You only go once around the track. It's, it's definitely a kids game. But again you still have lots of choices. Like, yes, you may be in front of you, you only have red and yellow, and while you rolled a, you you didn't roll a yellow and all you have is a red, you have no choice. But then usually on most turns, it's about picking which dice to use. Now, there is always an optimal move, but I think that's more about it being a kid's game than being a roll and move. And I should point out that there is a 2020 version, the Monza 20th anniversary version, oh, wow. which adds... Some new driver, uh, advanced driver variants, and a new track that came Ooh. out last year, and that was Monza. All right, that I, I would recommend picking up. That sounds awesome. Just again, my kids are well past this game at this point. I should be teaching them Rally Man. I just don't have the physical <laughs> version. I'm uh, sticking with kids' games because I going through again. I we did some research on this, and I managed to find a really good list on Board Game Geek and found a way to sort it and stuff. This showed up, and I thought of it. And this is a great 
game if you like again trouble sorry parcheesi that style of game so this is a kid's game that my kids still play this is one i'll sit down and play with them now um this does the thing that backgammon does because what you have is a bunch of mice and i don't remember how many it's five or six mice you put on a board and you roll your dice and you get to split up the pips to move one or more of your dice more of your, your your mice and there's a cat on the board and if you roll the six I think it's to say it's either the six or the one. The cat also moves, and the cat just moves set spots. So, so what you're is, trying to do is there is no six. It's one, one, two, three, four, five, and on the two ones, the cat moves. Oh, there you go. So, so again, there they've done the thing where they mitigate some of the randomness by changing the dice. So what you can do is while you're doing this, it's it's got to push your luck element because your mice can instead of keep running around the track trying to get to cheese vana at the end of the board, which is a huge six point wheels of cheese, you can duck off into people's houses. And if you duck off into a people's house, that mouse is now out of the game and will collect a piece of cheese. And while the first house has single piece wheels and then there's like double piece wheels up to quarter piece wheels and you get more cheese. At the end of the game, once everyone's mice have either reached Cheesevana or have been caught by the cats, you just count up how much cheese everyone's collected. So the things it does here is you've got a few different things. You can split up your pips. You got dice that are not a standard linear curve. They've been changed a little bit. And the fact that you have a push your luck element. Do you keep trying to run? Because what happens is the, the cat speeds up as it gets around the track. It starts jumping spots. So interestingly, uh, this is actually uh, called Viva Topo originally, uh, but is now renamed to Viva Mouse, M-A-U-S, mm -hmm. in the latest 2019 version. But that is Viva Topo or Viva Mouse. Viva Mouse. Didn't know that one. Next, I have a game I found at origins um rio grande games does this really cool section of origins and it's the biggest hidden gem of origins well at least it was we're going to assume it's the same where they have all their games you can play and when you play them you earn little tokens where you can trade them in but the other thing is they provide food so if you have no budget and you're at origins all you have to do is keep playing Rene, uh, rio grande games and they bring out food so it's what we do when we want to snack um they often put out pop and water um and the, like they serve like tacos and stuff it's 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 don't tell too many people while there one time uh getting a snack before we had a big meet up later in the day for the misdirect and mark podcast we we're like all right we have played most of these and this is where i tried out a few like transamerica we talked about a couple weeks ago we tried that and we tried this game called rattle bones now what this did was completely unique at the time it has now been used but at the time it was completely unique um, they've even reused the dice for this. It has plastic dice in three different colors, and all of the faces of the dice pop off and can be replaced by other plastic pieces. Now, I know like Dice Throne and some other games now do this, but at the time, it was totally unique. You're going to roll your three dice every round, and you're basically you're in a circus. You're playing little monkeys, and you're going around a track trying to earn victory points for doing various things. That part's not important. What's important is this makes roll and move work by letting you change your dice. You literally, your decision is, I'm going to change this. I don't want to roll this ever again, but I want to roll this more often. And it gives you, the player, complete control over the randomness of what's on the dice. This is a true hidden gem. I think it's brilliant. I want a copy, but it's out of print and hard to find. They totally stole the dice and reused them in the latest um, uh, Race for the Galaxy. No, Roll for the Galaxy expansion now includes these plastic dice. It is such a neat game. And, and it's not just movement. Like you replace the pips with victory points and resources you can collect. Like there, there's all kinds. I, I forget. I'd have to look at it. It's like 33 different faces you can put on these dice. It is a really neat game. If you can find a copy, I don't think they're ever going to reprint it because the cost of these dice was higher than they had expected. Um, but yeah, and then the, the modern one that everyone knows is Dice Forge. Where, but it uses cardboard chips that may eventually run out. These, these were actual plastic printed really nice pieces so yeah it fixes the problem by giving you complete control over the dice so uh i i'm gonna i'm gonna hate on this game for one simple reason and that's because their their uh their own text uses the term it's an experience to six-sided die for yeah. and for that this game <laughs> could go away but that was rattle bones just glad all of our podcast listeners don't do that when they listen to you make puns Next, I have another horse racing game. 
All right. So this this to me is is Camel Up Advanced. This is this is the although it's way older. This is actually another one of those older games. I'm not going to say a year because it seems like I'm wrong on all of them lately. I always think these old games are older than they actually are. I want them to be older than me, I guess. Uh, the game is Long Shot. This is a horse racing game that's similar to Camel Up, except in this case, you do start off by owning one horse. So out of all the horses on the board, every player is going to own one, and there will always be neutral horses. And yes, you roll to move that horse every round. But after moving the horse, you can then bet on the other horses as well as purchase additional horses after the race starts. So you can bet it like you, you may have your horse you run and yeah, you get a bonus if your horse finishes win place or show, but your real points are for betting on who wins win place or show, whether it's you or not. And this has some interesting random things where you randomize which horse moves and then roll to see which moves. This is until camel up came out my favorite, like horse racing game, like that style of race. This is much more strategic and tactical than Camel Up because, well, there's no silly stacking and things going backwards and cameras to get you bonus spots or oasis to slow things down. This is almost like just purely random. The horses are going to move. But it's that fact that you get to do the bet, right? Like, yes, you start with one horse and there are reasons you can try to do better things for that horse, but you also can be like, no, my horse has no chance. I'm going to invest all my money on other stuff. So uh, this is a 2009 game. Uh, interestingly, just this year in 2021, mm -hmm. there is a purely dice version of the game coming up, which is Long Shot the Dice Game. Yeah, I saw that when I was doing the research. And I'm like, they're going to make Long Shot more random? <laughs> but that was Long Shot. All right, last game I've got tonight. Favorite roll and move games. It's a Milton Bradley classic game of post-apocalyptic vehicular combat, and that is Thunder Road, which actually is a grail game for a number of people. I happen to find my copy at an antique mall in London, Ontario, but it's missing the black die, which is one of the things that fixes this game. So yes, it's highly random. Um, this is a roll the dice, pick which of your three vehicles to move. You have two ground vehicles and a chopper. There is a thing where if you get your vehicles off the edge of the map, anyone who's still on the last board gets eliminated. So yes, there's a big whoever rolls higher tends to get an advantage, but there are a couple things done to help with the dice. So first off is the fact you have three vehicles. So you're going to split up your dice and you have to split them up because you don't want any one of those vehicles falling behind or do you so that you can spend your dice to keep your other vehicles going. So there's your decision, right? Your interesting decision is do I sacrifice one of the vehicles? Then there's the fact the board has wasteland, but down the middle is the blacktop. You have actual pavement. And while if any of your ground vehicles are on the pavement, you get this bonus die that actually has higher numbers on it. And you get to roll that in addition to the other dice so you can really zoom. Well, that's cool and thematic, but kind of random. But what I like is that adds an air, not area control, but like you are going to fight over that middle because of that bonus which just adds a thematic element and the whole battling for the center is such a big part of the game. So yeah, it's a bit of a dice fest, but such a good game. Like it, it really is it, like for a classic Milton Bradley toy horrific game. It is really well done. Interestingly, a lot of people have made their own black dies to go with that. Game. I think that's it. Well, the thing is I got it and I thought they're all just D sixes and it ends up the, the black is not. Yeah. So I I'm like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> That is not, sorry, it's not bigger. It's like the, the normal D6, it's like one to three, but it's in addition to the other dice. Right. I shouldn't say it's higher numbers. It's in addition to the other dice. And that was Thunder Road. Coming up next, we're going to have some honorable mentions like we often do in our yeah. recommendations. I like to throw these in, right? Because there's, for one, we do research before we do these shows, right? I, and, and we look up stuff. And what I tend to watch for is if I see lots of people saying, this is the best roll and move game, even if I don't like it, I feel the need to share it with you folk. I Like, if everyone else loves it, you're probably going to love it too, right? Not everyone has the same taste in games as I do. Um, plus, there's another one I had to throw on here because I didn't know if we were going to allow it or not. And I, I don't even know what our an I final still don't know answer if we've was. I it or not, yeah. <laughs> But we're going to put Rallyman GT here. Is it a roll and move? I don't know. I, you, I, I think it is. Sean still, it, I think he's a little closer to my side than when we started this, but he's still not over the fence. So Rallyman GT, um, to me, this is racing using dice done right. 
whether you call it roll and move or not, it works so well. You plan out your turn and then hope the dice are on your side. It changes it from being purely random to a push your luck game. And I love that aspect. Like, I'm so glad Sean got me into this game and I, I need to get a physical copy of this at some point. But I don't need it now because we can't get together and play anyway. But soon, <laughs> at some point, maybe they'll do another Kickstarter because they had a Kickstarter with like all the expansions. Go all in on it because I have really enjoyed Rallyman GT. And that was, as said, Rallyman GT. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Next is a game that everyone seems to love but me. I don't know why. It is Jamaica, a pirate-themed racing game with a ton of take-that elements. This is a try to get around the board, but also collect a lot of treasure along the way and fight other people with this kind of rock, paper, scissors element. Um, this is on most of the roll and move best lists I saw when I Googled it. Our chat room, I noticed, has brought this game up. A couple different people in the chat have brought up Jamaica. I don't know. I tried it. I tried it three times. First time I played with two players. That was a mistake. I don't even know board game geek says you can play it with two players. I, it, that was not good. That was just the person who got ahead, stayed ahead and won. So that kind of sucked. I then tried it with three players and it was better, but not great. And then I tried it once at like five or something. I don't know what the max is six or something. I think I tried it with five players. Yeah. So I tried it with five. So I never tried it with the max player count and it, I don't know, just didn't do it for me. I, I, you know what? I'm not huge on take that games. Like it, it kind of had that munchkin feel of whoever's in the lead, you're all going to beat up, which caused them to fall back. I don't know. I, it wasn't for me, but people love it. People love Jamaica. But to me, I, you know, I've never played the game. Uh, I've looked at the, the BGG listing, but your description of it makes it sound like Mario Kart. Yeah. And oh, no, I, I think that's fair. Mario Kart. So I honestly think that's fair. There we go. That was Jamaica. Next is Deep Sea Adventure. Um, I'm, I'm really curious about this game. This is from Oink Games. Oink produces, they're, they're from Japan, and they produce these little tiny, I don't know, they're like boutique games. The, the, their price point to me is way higher than they should be for a bunch of cardboard and wooden bits. And that's one of the things that's kept me away from them. But from what I understand, this game's fantastic. I know people who love Deep Sea Adventure and other games from Oink, and this has some kind of strong push your luck element, and there's something about rolling dice to see how deep you get. But to be honest, I, I didn't even know this was a roller move until doing research for this episode. So I learned the Deep Sea Adventure is a roller move that a lot of people dig, and I had no clue it was a roller move. There we go. And that was Deep Sea Adventure. Well, that's it for our discussion on roll and move games and our list of favorite roll and move games. We're going to head over to the lobby now and see what they thought about it all. All right, lobbyists, what do you have for us? What are some of your favorite roll and move games and or some of your thoughts on the topic or our definitions or lack thereof? <laughs> I gotta say this was one of, our, our chat was busy the entire time from start to finish. Since, since the first lobby till we just finished topping, it has been scrolling by. Yep. It has been going by. So, so Board Game Geek does agree with me that, that Rally Man is a rolling rate. Yep. I, I, roll, and move. I, I, roll and move. Roll and move. That's, this is this now has been I'm an ongoing problem for days yes, now. Yes. I, I think I was fine for the whole actual segment. Yeah, no, I, I don't I, I didn't hear any uh glitches. Now, here's an interesting thing that came up between uh Danielle and I in the chat room. Okay. So she doesn't think that uh can't stop is a roll and move because there's a chance where you cannot roll True. move when you roll. Okay. The problem with that definition is that makes Monopoly not a roll and move because if you're in jail and roll the dice and don't get the right number and don't pay the money, you don't get to move, even See, though I don't, you've rolled. I think the jail mechanic is outside the roll and move. That is a different mechanic in Monopoly. That is the effect of one spot. So that would be like saying, in Talisman, when I get to the center thing and I have to dice with death, I roll 3d6, my person on my right rolls 3d6, whoever rolls the highest wins. No, another thing they remove from later versions. How dumb is that? It's purely random. It's stupid. It's a stupid rule. That's gone in fourth edition. But that isn't roll and move. You're trying to outdice someone. Right. But that doesn't stop Talisman from being a roll and move. That's an effect of one spot. I would say the jail is the and uh, that rule for the jail is the effect of one spot in a larger roll and move game. Right. What? Well, uh... So I don't know. I I because there's I, the three doubles I, I in Monopoly tempted... too. Three doubles in Monopoly. You go to jail. You don't get to move the, your 
based on the randomness. Uh, yeah, that, that. But you are moving to jail. There is a result. If you get three negatives, you've rolled. You now move to jail. But I mean, in the same time, the the result in can't stop is a negative, right? You, yeah. You roll and you can't move because of what you've rolled. I think the big one. It's and why an interesting. It's an interesting aspect. Yes. Of, no, of I get. I, th I think the big reason that rally man shouldn't be and can't stop shouldn't be is the same thing, is that your roll, you either move one or not. Right. It's not. You don't move the it's, result of the roll. Right. It's the. And it's the binary where, But then I don't know how rally man stays on the list if can't stops not. That's yeah. that, like that, I could definitely see that argument, and I honestly think not moving is an option. I don't. I don't think that removes it from a roll and move. Right. Like, like, um, here's an example of I, I can't see anyone arguing that Formula D is in a roll and move. When you start the game, you can jump up in a gear, but if you roll the lowest number in a die, you stall out. And I think Rally Man has some mechanics like yeah, that too when the you're at zero. Start to, the rolling start yeah. rule. But you could not move. Right. Can't stop. You made the choice to keep rolling until you can't. Yes, that is an aspect. Yep. But the fact that, yeah, you may not move. Hero Quest, when you roll, you don't have to move. That's a good example, too. So, yeah, Hero Quest came up in the chat. I totally agree. That is a great roll and move game. Uh, it's too light for me, like, to be honest. I love Advanced Hero Quest, which is a roll and move game, too. But then we found a broken mechanic in it where everyone just sat outside the door for an entire round until initiative was started. Then they'd open the door and they'd just fight the monsters as they came out one at a time through the door, which was lame. And no, it wasn't thematic, but I played with Power Gamers back then. And there was no actual rule in the game to mitigate it. Like you made a wandering monster roll every round to see if an ogre came because you're hanging out in the hallway. That might have fixed it. Right. But yeah, Hero Quest definitely. Um, most dungeon crawls, though, got rid of it because people didn't like that in Hero Quest. And I got to say, the most boring part of Hero Quest is when you've cleared out the room and then you have to go wandering and trying to find the next door. And why am I rolling? Like, just let us teleport to the next door. And I used to do that. I'd be like, because everyone's just going to move there. And then you're going to wait until the dwarf or whatever catches up. And then once everyone's there, you're going to go in the room. So why even make me roll the move? Why not just teleport? Right. Uh, now, what I want to do is I'm going to jump into the Discord, which hopefully won't kill our uh, thing was mentioned, quality. Uh, Ryan mentions, there was an era where games with rolling and moving make money. So yes. any game that wants to make money will include that mechanism somehow com with comfort and tradition. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's part of it is there was an era where the stock market was king and the stock market was everything and, and people were going to make it rich or, or dreamed about making it rich through mm -hmm. the stock market and the stock market uh, in to the, to the popular opinion is randomness making, you know, money. It's, it's, it's a, it's a different form of lottery. It's rich people's lottery. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what is lottery, but, you know, putting down some money and rolling a dice to see what happens. Uh, and there's a lot of games that used that sort of vague understanding of stock market ideas and randomness mm -hmm. ideas, as well as, you know, progression and what you ended up with when you, when you, when you put those ideas together, when you think about stock markets and randomness and, and progression to an end, an end point, you get roll and move. I mean, that's, that's just sort of what happens. That was something I saw in the chat that there had to be a destination. And I don't agree with that one because then Zaya doesn't count. Well, neither does Monopoly. Well, you are looping the board. <laughs> Again, there's no but yeah, there's no end it's, real destination. It's, it's, a, it's a end a circle. So um, here is a list from Jess Seuss, uh, who hasn't actually played them, but they're ones like he's heard <laughs> people talking about and his friends like. So we have Zaya, Camel Up, and Jamaica. So yeah, we agree with all of those. I'm not a fan of Jamaica. Um, Bike Guy Dave says. Um, a game his daughter made for school. Here is a complaint about rolling moves. Teachers, stop making your kids make god dang rolling moves that are just land on a spot and do a thing, which is often either roll again or move backwards. Like, just teach them better board games. Like, they're out there. There are companies that will send you teaching resources for this stuff. The last rolling move I actually played was Welly Can Land, which was all about drinking and raiding beer while you're rolling moved. You know what? It worked because the rest of the game was fun which we talked about. Well, I think a lot of what, a lot of what happens is, and this goes to the teaching thing. Um, I see it in um, RPG, online RPG stuff. People want to, you know, people want to make a game. So they make a roll and move and it's I mean, one, it's comfortable and it's familiar. So that's yeah. one of the reasons, but a lot of it is the roll and move is just a mechanic 
equivalent to drawing a random card, right? So you've got a path and the path is a bunch of colors and you don't know which color you're going to land on until you roll the dice. And then when you land on that color, you pick, you know, a challenge or a card from something based mm -hmm. on that. Uh, and that's a lot of, so it, it's just a way to add an extra layer of randomization beyond shuffling a deck or shuffling multiple Which decks. is supposed to make it more interesting, but doesn't always do so. Again, it depends on the, on your end goal. If the goal mm -hmm. is just to do something fun when you draw a card and land on a spot, yeah. it's 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 a way to do it. You know, it's it suits the purpose. So yeah, Bike Guy Dave does mention Talisman. We've, I think, covered that one in quite a bit of detail. Um, talks about when he was a kid. Once he played, uh, oh, he doesn't have the name, so that doesn't work. Uh, we've got Dungeons and Dragons Monopoly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here's Jeff's definition. If you play a game that has roll the dice, move that many spaces, do what it says on the space, that's a crap game. If you have a game that says roll the dice, make some interesting choices informed by the die roll and move, then you have a good game that isn't really doing what we hate about rolling moves, which I think fits pretty well. But he really threw in that roll the dice and move, yeah. but having a decision point. Uh, interestingly, um, Courtney's got uh, Twister on his list, and I have to say I disagree. Um, I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't think that's a, that's a rolling move. That's again, you're just placing it onto a spot, right? You're not actually making you, you, a move. Well, again, you're in. Uh, yeah, you're not getting anywhere. There's no progression. Yeah, I think that's the problem there. I think there has to be some kind of progression towards some goal, which I guess the goal in Twister is not fall down but that's not really based on where you're moving to. Right. So I don't know if he's repeated them all in the chat, but he, I've got a list from him here of, which, wow, there's a lot of overlap here, which is <laughs> not what we expected. Hero Quest, Camel Up, Jamaica, Formula D, Rally Man, Ghost White and Treasure Hunters. Then Twister, which we just talked about, Cranium. Now, Cranium to me is a move to a spot and do the interesting thing on the spot. So it's just a way to randomize what little mini game you play. Right. And I think that, qualifies as a good roll and write because again the other stuff is what makes it interesting the roll and moves just a randomizer you could draw a card and do the thing game of life i actually think game of life is a great example of a classic roll and move that was good because the path split mm -hmm. and there were meaningful decisions on do you do you turn to the life of crime and take the shortcut this is the old life i don't know what the new ones the new one's all happy and shiny and you can get pets and i don't think any bad things happen to you but like you're like, which house should I buy? Because the mortgage is higher on this house than the other, and it was a valid decision. Yep. So Clue, uh, life, I agree. Clue, I think, is terrible because of roll move. That's that's to me what ruins Clue. You could end up with less clues than all the other players because you kept rolling ones, and I think that's a terrible mechanic. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. does, uh, people enjoy Talisman, but for nostalgia's sake, again, give the fourth edition a chance, uh, or any of the ones based on the fourth edition. No, it's not a shining, oh my god, it's an amazing game. You can see my Batman Talisman review on the blog or here on YouTube. Uh, and she games brings up Rat Race from 1967. Wow. Which was, uh, she imagined back in the, as a kid, the better than Monopoly game. Yeah, she described that one in the chat, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it sounds like Talisman, because you start with like crappy jobs on the outside of the board and eventually level up and get to move to the inside, which sounded so much like the Outer Kingdom to the Inner Kingdom to the Center Kingdom and Talisman to me. Monopoly meets Talisman without without the big boss and the big bad guy yeah. in the middle. Now, Danielle mentioned Sword and Skull. I That one, like, totally just, I don't remember at all, and Ruin. Like I, I have not played either of those. Yeah, Sword and Skull is 2005 uh, pirate-themed. Uh, yeah, I would have guessed with that name, but yeah, like, pirate, I, I know nothing about that Avalon game. Hill. Avalon Hill, okay. Yeah, it's a 5.5, it's a so you might not have heard of it. Well, yeah, it's a roller <laughs> move. Yeah. Uh, and then Ruin from Buffalo Games. Ruin, no. Um ruin from 2008 from buffalo games there we are yeah uh 5.6 uh better rating <laughs> yeah no uh modular board there that's where See, it gets there the, you uh, go that's where it gets the better rating from that's fair so uh razuel is mentioning a shopping mall game where you had to roll and move to different stores and collect things that would be mall madness 
There we go. Which actually has been reprinted. That game, if you can find the original copy, is worth a fortune because of the board. The, it was a plastic mall with a grid on it. That is so great for you got a time travel D and D game where you get warped into reality, or you want to fight zombies in a mall. Yeah, Mall Madness. There is a new version, and it's all cardboard's garbage. Like, try to find the 80s version. The interesting thing I'm seeing about Ruin here is that it has this giant D20. Like, okay, massive. Uh, I think it's a D20. I can't quite tell. Does it come with the game? It's not just some board game geek users. Yeah, no, it's this unique. It's got this unique. Oh, it is 20 sided. Yeah, and it's huge. Like, someone took a picture of it next in their hand, and it's like, you know, big. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, not ones we know. Uh, I'll try to remember to throw them in the notes because uh, D's not here to be adjusting our notes as we go. Oh, interestingly, the dice actually has two functions in Ruin. It says it's two colored die. Yeah, so the, the dice has a red background. You swap out a card in the path, and then the number is how far you move uh, your pawns. So part of the modular board in, in Ruin is you're actually messing with other people's boards, oh, yeah. apparently. So uh, other ones that like didn't make the list that I considered was Labyrinth. Um, Magic Labyrinth. So this is a game that uses magnets and invisible walls. Well, they're not invisible. They're under the board, so you can't see them. But you roll to see how many spaces you move every turn. And that works well enough. But again, I think you could have gave everyone five points. I think it's to mitigate the fact that the walls are in random places. Uh, Cade to the Kingdom is another one where every time you move, you move the Demon King. Well, that's cool. Uh, next time we get the game together, Danielle will bring them. Instant to learn. So simple ones. Overall, I, I don't know. It's fine. It's a mechanic. Like, like my overall thoughts on Rail Move, I don't think negatively of it anymore. I used to. I have no interest in playing your pasted on theme, move a spot, and then do a thing. Like, I have absolutely no interest in that. Closest I'll ever get is Talisman. Um, another one that was on a lot of lists was Roombound, which is, to me, a modern Talisman. Right. Uh, the, specifically, the third edition. I haven't played the third edition. I played the second edition and it had one of the coolest roll and move mechanics mm -hmm. where you had terrain dice and you would roll five of them and you could only move through the terrain that you rolled the right dice and certain ones were barely on there like mountains were only one side of the dice forests were say two sides whereas roads were or whatever planes were like the other three sides i don't remember the exact numbers here so it was neat because you'd roll but then you'd decide what to do based on your roll so you're like okay i have two mountains and a forest so i could reach this town or i could start heading off this way but it, oh, I, oh lakes i think was another one or water was another one single die one so it's like oh i can cross the river this turn though i'm not going to get far but then i'll be across it to be able to do this thing next turn i thought that was fascinating i actually really liked that mechanic i don't know if third edition used that I like the dice in that so much that I got a backup set because I was worried I was going to wear through them because <laughs> I just, I thought they were also great for D&D. So what I would do is I would be running a fantasy role-playing game and the players would be like, I go to this town and I play fairly improv, not completely improv, but fairly improv. And I'm like, I honestly, as a DM, don't know what's between these two. And if I just run off my head, it's going to be a forest with a road on it because that's just where I default when I think medieval fantasy. So I would roll these dice and be like, you have to pass through this type of terrain, this type of terrain, this type of terrain. And then I would put one encounter in each of the two, three types of terrain. No, not always combats. But I use those dice all the time for fantasy RPGs because they were great for coming up with terrain types. And so third edition does have custom etched yeah, uh, dice. Yeah, terrain dice. Yeah. From what I understand, they changed the combat system to like a flip. You like flip poker chips or something. Oh, hold on. This one. Oh, this is somebody's custom. Uh, somebody made them. I oh, don't think okay. they do have them anymore. Anyway, but that that's one I almost put on the list. But to be honest, I the second edition's so out of print, and I have no idea if the third edition's the same. So I didn't want to throw that on there. Looks like third edition is tokens. Yeah. See, that's a, you. You either like bag pull them or something, and that just didn't sound as cool to me. Though the game is rated higher, so maybe it's good. It's a seven that, five. Yeah, that's pretty good for yeah. for but i don't know is it even a roll and move because i saw it on people roll and moves list but it, well it's, maybe it's a rando and move right if you're pulling chips it's i guess yeah, the same result geek just crashed on me oh um, terrible you broke board game geek yeah, apparently how dare <laughs> you break the board game geek it's got, it's got think, too many I different mechanisms That's there the is so much in the chat did, did we cover a good portion of it did we I miss think we anything? Got a lot of it in there like, like feel free to repeat stuff, yourself <laughs> I jumped in there and, and was was chatting with people along the way. Is Gaslands a roll and move? It is very similar to. No, I, well, if, if Rally Man is yes, then Gaslands is. So, Gaslands is more like X Wing. You pick a template, 
and you put it out in front of your Matchbox car, Hot Wheels, sorry, I grew up with Matchbox. You put Matchbox is gone. Put it in front of your Hot Wheels car, and then it's going to tell you the difficulty of that particular maneuver, and you're going to roll dice. And if you roll enough successes, you end up at the end of the template. But if you fail, you spin out, which there's a place to attach your car on the other end. So to me, that's the same as Rally Man. So if we're depending on where we put Rally Man, that's where Gaslands belongs. So here's here's an interesting one. If that is going to be, or if we were to make that a roll and move, I would have to put Blood Bowl as a roll and move because of the additional movements. So yes, you get a yep. X number of movements, but then to go, you if can, you want to run push for, your luck. if you want to push your luck, you would yeah. all of a sudden make to Blood honest, Bowl a roll I Googled and move. Blood Bowl today because I couldn't remember if you rolled to see how far you got to move your guys. You don't. It's no. based on one of their stats. Yeah, but I couldn't remember. So I actually looked it up. And to be honest, there, there we get into that same thing, right, with the, the randomness. Well, what if you move past them? They have to roll to see if they tackle you. Is that roll and move because they're rolling, and if they succeed, you stop moving, and if you fail, you keep going? Then we're getting into the rally man thing again. Right. I, I'm, I'm definitely I'm, – I'm going more Sean's way the more we talk about it, to be honest. Seamus uh, can't stop. Runebound, Runebound uh, third edition is listed as the roll slash spin and move. I don't see, know. I don't no know. actual confirmation, right? That's I uh, Yeah, I saw that today. Um, but I can't find any dice on it. So other than the cu the custom one people have made, so I think it's a bag puller. Yeah, well, it's still random. It's yeah. Still a random move, rando move. I mean, no, I, if, if, if I'm going to give work. spins and dice, random. I mean, you know, it'd be in random output. Yeah, random output move. So Ryan mentioned playing Talisman in the '90s. It was a yawn fest due to lack of agency, in which whatever direction I chose didn't feel like it mattered. So that is another aspect of Talisman that is definitely a thing. Now I don't know. I always have a goal when I'm playing Talisman. I'm trying to get to this spot where I can roll to get this next thing I'm going to need to progress. Now, maybe that's just because I played the game hundreds of times, but I never found like, yeah, sometimes it's draw a card to draw a card. But if I'm going that way, that means it's bringing me closer to the chapel and I'm good alignment. And I want to go to the chapel to see if I happen to get lucky and roll six and gain a craft. Like I know that. So it, it did matter which way I went. And I might want to go that way just for the chance of hitting the chapel and lose a life because I know that one of the other options on the blessed spot is if I roll a four or five, I get that life back. And then I'm going to move off and keep trying to go back until I can buff my craft and that'll let me win the game, right? Like that's how I play Talisman. So I think a lot of it is not knowing the cards in the deck and knowing, especially if you don't know what all the spots on the board do, especially the corners all do interesting things. If you don't know your odds of getting those things, if you don't know that going to the, the, the one in the one corner it's you roll two dice, but if you roll six or less, it's bad. And if you roll six or more, it's good. Well, you don't go there until you got a fate point. Then you do it. And then there's a better chance. Like, I just, I know that. I've internalized all that because I played way too much talisman back in the day. And to me, there are valid things. But if you don't know better, if you're just like, all right, I rolled a C. What are my two options? Draw a card to draw a card. And you're not looking ahead or picking a destination. It is way too random because you don't know better. Right. But is that a problem with the game or player's experience with it? uh zaya ryan wants it but it's too expensive fair totally yep. fair yeah, it no, is not a, a cheap game it's an investment absolutely uh, but you get a lot of game legend. out of it so mm -hmm. you do get a lot of game out of it yeah out of you it do for the price talisman legendary tales is not a rolling right really i i like that game but there's not a lot in common with talisman i think we're probably good at this point so key to the kingdom yeah i'm not saying anything else on here we're good remember if you've got a game or game night question for us all you got to do is head to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or send an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com.